Blood Shadows, an obscure pulp classic game in an obscure mystery setting, the noir genre. That's right, two French words in a row, the Relic Hunter must mean business. But hey, if it's good enough for Spider-Man, it's good enough for me. No really, check him out, he's all gritty and stuff, cool. Come with me, my fellow hunters, as I dungeon dive into the setting made famous by Humphrey Bogart and Dick Tracy. So light up that cigarette, because there's no such thing as cancer, and let's find out why it always starts with a dame in Whatever Happened to Blood Shadows. Today I'll be talking with Brett Bernstein, owner of Precious Intermedia, or PIGames.net, and the Blood Shadows property. I hope you enjoy. It is unique because it combines film noir traffics with magic and fantasy, mm -hmm. and horror. Okay. So you basically have three elements in one. There's lots of film noir magical games. I, I don't think there's many that combine the horror aspect with that. You can actually play the monsters. Oh, okay. So you, if you want to be a vampire or a werewolf or an undead, you can do that. It's built into the rules. Cool. Yeah, the only thing I had played that sounded even similar to it was Call of Cthulhu, but it didn't catch everything. It has a lot of similar elements, but it does yeah, it doesn't have that aspect of you being one of the monsters. And it's more it's not really a noir game, it's more of a well, there's different time errors, time, mm -hmm. different time zones you can be in. Great. Okay, so what like decade is this really focused on? Well the thing with the game, it is its own custom world. So it's not set say in which more normal noir would be nineteen forties, thirties, fifties. It's not set in any specific time. You can pretty much warp things if you'd like as a GM. So if you want to add a little bit of futuristic tech via magic, you can easily do that. But technology is a funny thing with the game, and that's pretty much, I guess, how you would define what time it is or what, what year it is. Um, magic can do a lot of things. Magic is very prevalent. So it's one of those games where you can't really isolate when it's supposed to take place since again it is another world and it does have elements that can change your perception of when it's taking place I would probably say hey it's about mystery so like Call of Cthulhu as you mentioned if you want to go looking for mysteries to solve again film noir with like Maltese Falcon, things like Casablanca, it's easy to, t to throw the mysteries in, and that's one of the key elements of the game. But you can go further and also kind of do like a dungeon crawl with the noir elements because of the fantasy elements. Mm -hmm. um, and then finally, play the monsters, so you can go monster hunting, find new spells, find magically enhanced items. It combines a lot of elements that I think people enjoy. Well, originally it was published by West End Games. And, I don't know, I think most people by now know about West End Games. They produced the, the original Star Wars role-playing game, and then they had their Master Book series of games, mm -hmm. which basically were all world books. They had a uh, Indiana Jones world book for it. They had Tank Girl, Species, and then one of them was Blood Shadows, which I, probably was the only in-house developmental project. It wasn't a licensed property. And I don't know, I guess it was because of the way they marketed it, and, and I always felt that Masterbook, the system, was not really a good fit for Blood Shadows. It's a great setting. Masterbook, I like as a rule set, but I just don't think it fits Blood Shadows. So, that was around 1994, I believe, is when they first released that. And I don't know how well it did back then, but 
Jedi Master book, I guess, went out of favor. They dropped it. They brought it back as a D6 world book. Okay. So that was when there was a resurgence in the D6 games, West End games. They had the D6 Space, Adventure, uh, and Fantasy, I believe. And this was one of the books for Adventure. And then West End games pretty much died. And I bought the rights to Blood Shadows, Master Book, and also their Shadows End game line. Okay, cool. And I brought the Blood Shadows game back in the print with the Master Book rules. And basically now we're going ahead and I'm rewriting it to use a newer rule version, uh, which is 2D6 based. And it's going to be a lot simpler, but still a lot of options for the game. If there's one thing that you would say people are, that have played the old system are going to be most excited about this new edition, what do you think it is? Just the streamlining. The okay. Quicker pace, less having to look things up. That's about it, I guess. I mean, there's other things out there, but that's probably the most important one. Cool. All right. So no checking for Thacko then, huh? No. Well, <laughs> there are similar elements that you might have to look at the reference charts every now and then, but it, it's not as what it used to be. Of all the games out there, it's just something different. So, I mean, it, and it's also been a lot of fun to redo everything. Well, my fellow hunters, it seems Blood Shadows is back. So the next time you need some gritty noir fantasy action, you know right where to go. I want to thank Brett Bernstein for the interview, and although he isn't into social media, you can follow me at RPG Relic Hunter, and I will tweet out when Blood Shadows will be in pre-order status. Check out PI Games for the rest of his titles, and in the meantime, if you would like to subscribe and join my hunting party, just vote Cthulhu for 2016. For the last video in this series, just click Dick Tracy's Watch. Until next time, he is looking at you, kid. And remember to play like the dice are trying to kill you, because they are.